Uh, we'll talk some more. Thank you. Great. Take it. it easy, Rob. Have a great morning. Hi, kiddo. How are you? Um, all right. How are you? I'm, um, you know, I just got you off. From Maryland did that to you? Oh, jeez. All right. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Five, four, three. Hey, hey, we're back. We're back here with more Live from the Heartland. You can listen to earlier shows anytime you want. Actually see them if you go to youtube.com slash heartlandmedia. I'm Michael James. I'm here with Katie Hogan. We're doing the show from the beautiful studios at WLUW downtown in the Loyola University campus, 26 East Pearson. We hope to be back next weekend uh, for our show, our, actually our 36th anniversary of the Heartland Cafe weekend, <coughs> having a show at the Heartland Cafe where we broadcast every Saturday, 9 to 10 a.m. from the stage at the Heartland. We are going through some repair work on our equipment. We'll keep you posted. Okay, we got another old friend coming up here now. She's here. She's ready. She's got. Uh, she's dressed for radio. Here we go, Chris Giovannis. How are you, Chris? It's uh, really a pleasure to be here, as always. It's good to have you back. You've been on the show before. Yeah. This time we want to talk a little bit about what's go the aftermath of the NATO demonstrations. Uh, I got an email from Joseph Hosbaker yesterday or the day before. Uh, letting us know that a fellow named Danny Johnson, who had been a protester at the NATO demonstrations, the case was dismissed, and Anita Alvarez, the Cook County State's Attorney, who, uh, despite what she says when she's running for office and talking to the 49th Ward Democrats, seems to have a very conservative, uh, misdirected bent in many ways. Give us the story. Well, we shouldn't be surprised uh, at uh, Anita Alvarez's vindictiveness and um you know, political agenda here in this case, but just by way of background, a little bit on Danny Johnson. He was arrested actually before the NATO meeting formally began. Was he began. one of the Bridgeport guys? No, he no. was. Okay. Um, he was arrested at an immigrant rights uh, action on, I believe, May fifteenth. No, could have May fifteenth, I believe. Just days before. Yeah, um, okay. and uh, um, held in jail for over a week. Um, his case was thrown out. He was originally, originally charged with one uh, count of assault. The uh, uh, assertion from law enforcement was that he uh, struck a police officer. Um, eyewitnesses um, have purportedly said that he actually um, was tackled from behind by an officer for absolutely no reason. And you know, if you come in contact with an officer, why that's assault, even if it's them that initiate the assault, so whatever. Um, the case was thrown out at the end of May. It was ditched. Brought it before a judge, and the judge, you know, dismissed the charges, um, sent Danny on his way. Now, Danny has said publicly that actually he found his time locked up in Cook County Jail, um, not as terrible as, it, as one might have thought. Uh, he was in general population. He spent the week uh, talking to fellow prisoners about politics, about economics. Um, you know, building relationships with people there, um, you know, doing everything that essentially a fascist state wouldn't want a politically awake person or persons to do, which is to discuss the larger dynamics that oppress us all, but particularly people who seem to find themselves trapped, often simply for, you know, poverty, the inability to make bail in a place like Cook County Jail. Right. Um, a, a, a criminal injustice system which, by the way, you know, sustains the salaries of people like Anita Alvarez and Tom Dart. Uh, part of a political infrastructure that is very much staked to um, everything from the national war on terror meme um, to hyperlocal, you know, war on gangs memes that basically line their pockets and keep them in political power. Um, and there you have it, folks. That's that. Nobody but Chris can say that all that that's, stuff in one sentence. That's that's, that's pretty, pretty much that's, that's good. pretty much the, the <laughs> dynamic at play here um, in this mm -hmm. case. And frankly, with all of the cases related to um, the uh, the uh, NATO meeting, um, and the, and there are a number of other people that remain in jail. The, probably the best known are the NATO three. Um, That's the Bridgeport kids. Those are the, those are the Bridgeport kids. Um, apparently, the uh, evidence against them um, is being provided by uh, two people who are police informants named Mo and Gloves, who infiltrated... Gloves was the name of the informant around the Fred Hampton murder. Well, no small irony there. It's really, that's why I it's brought really, it up. And actually, and actually, that's very important um, to call back to history like that, because what we're seeing 
um, in these NATO so-called terrorism cases, as Anita Alvarez would like to have us believe. What is up with her? Well, you know, I think I think there's there's Alvarez's local political agenda, but I think there's also a much larger national dynamic um, that is really part of the trajectory of the reinstatement of a really sweeping security state that we saw begin under Bush and unfortunately <coughs> that we've not seen um, the Obama administration step away from. Um, I mean that's just a sad reality um, and there is, there is no, I, I have every confidence that when this comes out in the wash in terms of these NATO cases uh, we're going to find out that informants like Mo and Gloves um, who are basically the only basis for these so-called terrorism cases, um, are actually probably on the payroll of some law enforcement agency. Which would and mean on our payroll. Well, correct. We, our, our, who are Mo and Gloves? Our, our, public, our public dollars are essentially bankrolling um, a sweeping series of entrapment cases that we've seen unfold all over the country. In Cleveland, um, we've seen um, FBI raids uh, occurring recently in uh, all over the Pacific Northwest, in, in um, uh, Portland, in um, Seattle. Uh, we've seen them occur in the East Coast, in Vermont. Um, and, and in these cases, what, what becomes apparent is that the so-called evidence against uh, so-called terrorist defendants is actually crap that has been manufactured by either law enforcement outright or um, informants um, or agent provocateurs that they planted who may not actually be sworn law enforcement agents. And, and you know, it's designed to criminalize a political movement that cannot be contained, controlled, channeled, manipulated into a particular trajectory um, by larger institutional forces in this country. And if you can't contain it, you better shut it down when it threatens the power infrastructure. Chris Giovannis, tell us uh, what the next step is around this, this case uh, so that people can, where they can find out more about it, where they uh, can go if uh, there's a hearing or something and people want to show support. Uh, let's start with that. Well, we encourage people um, to learn more about all of the cases um, around the NATO meetings, and that includes Danny Johnson's, but also the NATO three. Um, there are, and those uh, are uh, Brent Betterly, Brian Church, and uh, Jay Chase, um, but also uh, Sabi uh, Sanakiewicz and Mark Newham, uh, who were also um, arrested in conjunction with those so-called, you know, terror raids. Um, but whose cases are separate from the NATO three? Those it, remember the NATO three, three kids arrested. So know? there's about six people all together. Well, and there are a couple of other folks who are in jail on various and sundry felony charges who simply haven't been able to make these outrageous bails. You know, it's like, uh, you know, we're going to accuse you of assault based on some bogus, you know, assertion of some cop. Um, you know, three hundred thousand dollars bail. It's insane. When Anita Alvarez uh, did nothing to prosecute the sworn police officer who was just indicted in federal court this week, Jean Mullins, oh, what's that case um, a former uh, director of communications <coughs> for um, the previous county board president. Um, right. Full disclosure, I um, actually worked for Cook County for many years and actually worked for the guy who was just indicted. Um, it's about time he was indicted for uh, uh, grifting the public. Um, I'd like to know why Anita Alvarez could never find it in her heart to indict that cop. Um, since uh, the next time she comes on the show, we'll ask her. She convened a grand jury uh, to take a look at the volumes of evidence against this guy for criminal wrongdoing, and um, you know, as as is her policy with every single cop out there, uh, she can't seem to find it in her to prosecute police officers if they're guilty of. Uh, you know, grifting the public trust, or if they're guilty of murdering a civilian. Chris, what are the um, the pieces of legislation that um, support uh, this sort of neglecting our civil rights? Other than you know, Homeland Security does a lot of things. It's got a big umbrella. It's got a lot of folks feeling like they're part of it all over the country in um, police and uh, first responders. Uh, but there's the Patriot Act. There's the ND. NDAA. Um, well, these these folks, Danny Johnson, um, in the um, is not is not charged with terrorism per se, but the NATO three um, and Savvy uh, Sebastian 
Um, those four individuals are charged not under federal law, but under the state anti-terrorism statute, which is okay. also something that was deployed in the wake of 9-11. It's never been used before right. um, in Illinois, so you know, Anita gets to get out there and claim that she's doing something forward thinking. Will it be constitutional? Well, you know, that's a, that's a big question since it's, you know, a political question, not yeah. an objective question. And look at the character of our um, Supreme Court. Although, even though we have some very conservative folks on um, the uh, Seventh Circuit Court, um, they are not always um, lockstep reactionaries. Um, and the liberals, for that matter, on the Seventh Circuit are not always lockstep, you know, liberals either. So We're we'll kind of sick of lockstep. Yeah. Uh, you know, one more question around Danny Johnson. Uh, in the uh, press release I got, it, it, it says, uh, and it may be a little bit of a polemic, uh, but that uh, Nita Alvarez, the state's attorney, steered the grand jury to reinstate the charges. No, that's absolutely true. Tell us how, what a grand jury is and how it works, because well, people don't have the same rights under a grand correct. jury. Correct. A, gra a grand jury is actually an institution that many who are interested in reforming um, the uh, great limitations um, and problems in the criminal justice system think ought to be uh, abolished Eliminated. altogether. The line about grand juries, whether they're at the federal or the state circuit level, is that, you know, you could get a grand jury to indict a ham sandwich. Um, you know, the, the power lies completely in the prosecutor. Um, those who are brought before a grand jury to provide evidence are not allowed to bring their lawyers in. Um, and it is that process that's basically used as a tool to manufacture the excuse to bring criminal charges um, uh, against individuals. And, and you can never see the evidence um, in, uh, from grand juries if uh, the state decides to try to keep that evidence from you. I mean, it's really deeply problematic, especially in cases that are framed around the rubric of terrorism, because that provides for greater excuses for secrecy and withholding of certain types of evidence. It, very, very, very dangerous. Um, it's very instructional. Um, well, and Alvarez basically, after Danny Johnson's charges were thrown out, went back to the secret grand jury that she convened, right? Mm -hmm. It convened it in Cook County. Um, you know, I, I've never heard of a grand jury that when a prosecutor goes to them and says, we want to bring charges against this guy, here's what we say the evidence is. I've never heard of a grand jury saying, yeah, no, no we don't really buy that. You know, they're, they're always manipulated as tools of the prosecution. Um, this was a straight up, um, you know, at least on its face, vindictive stunt that Alvarez pulled, um, perhaps in collusion with, perhaps at the behest of the CPD. Is anybody else going on media like you are right this minute talking about this story? No, you know, I think it's very hard to get our friends in the corporate press to focus on just why cases like this are, um, you know, really problematic and why they really ought to pay attention to them. Um, and, and, you know, folks who are defending the data five are just, you know, going to have to step up the game. And I think those of us who care not just about these cases, but the deeper issues involved also really need to step it up. I mean, as an advocacy journalist, you know, um, I recognize that um, what the deeper dynamics that are going on here, besides the consequences for these individuals who are being railroaded, the deeper dynamics here for all of us in terms of the threat to our fundamental privacy, our fundamental freedoms, is very, very serious. It's yeah. as serious as it's been since the McCarthy era. And we've got to step up and really unpack what's going on and push back. Well, we only, we're only we running out of time here. So that how, about a, how about a little update on what's going on with Occupy uh, locally and nationally? What you got to do with short? Occupy locally and nationally is um, working, uh, well, locally, they're certainly working on these cases. They're uh -huh. also working on labor um, you know, actions, educational actions, and so forth. So. You know, it's, I think it's a bit of a period of reset nationally for Occupy because uh, so many occupations have found themselves just assaulted by law enforcement. So, you know, the, on the other hand, it's built some very strong, very large core groups across the country of people who are literally new to politics yeah. in the last year and have had an incredible learning curve. Um, and are inspired to proceed. On the local cases, NATO5, that's N-A-T-O, the number five, dot Occupy Shy, O-C-C-U-P-Y-C-H-I dot O-R-G. Check that out for information about the case and get involved. 
get involved. Really, there are fundamental freedoms, fundamental rights for all of us that are at stake with these cases. Chris Giovannis, I want to thank you so much for coming on the Live from the Heartland really? show. I always learn a lot whenever I hear you talk. Appreciate thank it. Thank you very much and for I appreciate your work. It. I appreciate it. All right, we're going to take another short work. musical break. I think we're hearing another two.